ओम तत्गणेशय विमे वक्रतुंदय धीमह तो दी प्रचोदया ओम ओं तत्परंपरियाय विमह ज्ञानलिंगीश्वराय धीमह तो गुरु प्रचोदया ओम ओं योग महर्षि दत्स्वामी गीतानंदगिरी गुरु महाराज की जय योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचम मल शरीर से वैद्यक योपाकोतम प्रवर मुनीन पतंजलि भ्राजलिराथस्मे ओ मत साधन पद शौचत्स्वंगजुगुप्स पारैरा संसर्ग Purity brings about bodily indifference and dispassion towards others. Shaucha implies internal and external purity of thought, word and deed. By creating a purity that is close to divinity, cleanliness is next to godliness. One transcends the body. In this high state there is no need for contact with others. Cleanliness does not limit itself to the physical body. Shaucha is not about brushing and flossing the teeth or cleaning the house inside and out. It is not just using the best soap and shampoo or detergent to make ourselves and our surroundings pick and span, but it goes much deeper. Think. What about the cleanliness of the thought process? What do I say? What do I think? Purity does not come with wearing white, black, orange or by the great show of unbearable piousness. Often the worst dirt is inside our heads. Swamiji was often asked, "Do you read minds?" He is leonine retort always was, "Why should I read minds? I don't read dirty books." The great Shakespeare caught in a nutshell the modern state of affairs of perfectly clean exteriors. hiding behind perfectly rotten interiors when he wrote o villain far without and um dirty within shri la shri shankaragiri swami gal was the mother tipati of shri kambali swami madam prior to yoga maharishi dr swami gitananda giri guru maharaj shankaragiri swami gal who lived to be 95 years of age had not taken a bath in 50 years he only used vibhuti powered um powered sacred ash made by himself to smear on his body daily yet the most wonderful pleasant smell emanated from him at all times because he had only a few clothes to wear and a few items of possession his surroundings were always clean and neat He had truly gone beyond physical cleanliness which included for him non-possessiveness and austerity into a more elevated level of purity. He taught me that shaucha is not about the number of baths you take every day but it rather is about how truly clean in thought, word and deed you are. Foreign visitors to India constantly complain about the dirt of India yet I find that many of them don't even know how to keep their own bodies clean, let alone their minds. The concept of cleanliness is so different from culture to culture. On a recent trip to Europe, my wife Devasena and I were stunned to see the amount of cigarette butts lying everywhere in the so-called clean European cities. The beer bottles littering the beaches or the hypodermic needles stuck on park benches the foul smells emanating from public latrines cigarette smoke the scent of meat cooking the whiff of alcohol in the air were quite nauseous to our sense of smell no one seemed to think those things as dirty yet say the word cow dung and everybody cowers in disgust Many sophisticates would be appalled to know that the floors of most rural homes in India are covered with cow dung as it is an antiseptic that keeps insects away. It is also excellent fuel material for biogas. 
A highly sensitive, intelligent professor in Berkeley University visited our ashram some decades ago to research Yoga Siddhi. He was distressed to witness our villagers living in huts made of mud. He said, how awful, they live in the dirt. But is the earth dirty? Concrete is perhaps the most filthy material ever invented by men. India is not a culture suited to modern consumption of plastic and paper. We don't even have enough dustbins. Those we have are instantly stolen and sold for scrap. Our villages and cities are not equipped to handle this horrendous waste. Bombarded by these modern materials, our innocent villagers have been seduced by their color and convenience, but they have no idea how to dispose of those disposables. I am often asked about the double-sided Indian drum I play, the mridangam, which is made from the skin of buffalo, goat and cow. Many of the greatest players of this instrument are the most orthodox people who would never even go close to a dead animal. Yet, they worship and do puja to the drum. For them, it is an instrument that enables the divine melody to be heard by human ears. Their perspective is changed by the artistic vision. They no longer see the skin of the dead animal. They see the divine manifesting through the instrument. Please don't dismiss this as blind belief or escapism. It is instead a higher and true reality that rises above our limited so-called normal concepts of purity and cleanliness. Cleanliness, like beauty, lies in the eyes of the beholder. The Abadhut of India, wandering naked ascetics, do not consider anything at all as unclean. A clump of mud is equal to a pound of gold in their eyes. Human excreta is no less pure than the consecrated water. When Swamiji played with small children, brought for blessings to him by proud parents, sometimes the little ones would urinate on him as he held them in his lap. Swamiji would laugh and console the mortified parents. Don't worry, this is like Amrita, sacred nectar, to me. Maharishi Patanjali says that in a perfect state of purity, one becomes dispassionate about one's own body, swanga meaning the limbs of one's own body. One then loses the necessity for contact with the bodies of others. Physical limitations are overcome through this niyama. Shocha enables the sadaka to become like the lotus that grows rooted in the mud, finally reaching out towards the sun. There it manifests universal grace and beauty, despite its so-called dirty origins. Om Loka Samasta Sukhini Bhavantu Sarve Janaha Sukhini Bhavantu Om Shantihi 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 Om